वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम शिवांगी लाहौटी ए के ए योर डिजाइनर दीदी एंड आई एम श्योर टुडे शेयरिंग समथिंग फ्रॉम माय पर्सनल लाइफ विद ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ यू गाइस नो आई मूव टू कनाडा इन सितंबर 2021 2021, right? It's 2022 already, guys. Wow. Okay. Anyway, I moved uh, to Canada and I lived in Toronto for the first 50 days, 40 days actually, that I was in the country. And a lot of you wanted to see a room tour and like an apartment tour of the studio apartment that I stayed in there. And I know a lot of you had a lot of questions about how did I book it? Where did I book it? Where did I find it? And how did I manage to save eleven hundred dollars, which is a steal deal? That's like sixty six, sixty seven thousand rupees, approximately, with taxes, everything else that you add later. And uh, this video is going to be a run through of that. So I'm going to show you first. the apartment and i'll give you a quick tour of the studio apartment that i was in number 2 i'm going to show you uh, how exactly i booked it so i'm going to share some tips and tricks i have been using airbnb for a while now uh, for all my vacations holiday rentals etc for those of you who don't know what airbnb is it's basically this online marketplace for home rentals home stays vacation rentals etc it's a us based company but they're pretty much worldwide and it's a very 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 famous company and one of the most trusted but even so since it's a marketplace there are some things you need to consider because not every apartment that is put out there is actually the quality that you see in images and i'm going to share some tips on how you can make sure that you get the best deal and you get a good apartment to yourself and you have a good pleasant experience once you book that apartment okay so let's quickly do a run through of the apartment that i was in for my first 40 days in canada and of course I'll also share the location, etc. For safety reasons, I'm not going to share the exact listing uh, location, but I'll share, um, you know, surrounding areas, etc., and the pros and cons of living in that space. So let's get started. This is my Airbnb in Canada. I've been living here for the last forty-five days. apartment right it's a beautiful studio apartment and perfect for one person or two people to stay and uh, to be very honest i did find a steal deal on it now when you listen to the numbers don't go all crazy on me and be like oh my god shivangi that's a huge amount of money you got ripped off because i'll tell you how i still managed to save 1100 dollars by the end of it which is a pretty good deal for downtown toronto so i lived in downtown toronto for the first 40 days when i was in canada because i knew one thing for sure that downtown area is usually the most expensive uh, in any in any city i've lived in downtown dubai also downtown montreal and downtown vancouver again is super super expensive not that i've lived there but i've lived in new york as well and that area again is super expensive because a all the big malls are out there all the big uh, sort of uh, you know offices are out there 
everything is in your vicinity you're literally living in the center of the city right the prime location all the hot spots all the tourist spots are sort of in the surrounding area which makes it a little more expensive of course because it is also very easy for you to commute and uh, considering you're moving to a new city or maybe you're going to a new city to sort of explore it on a holiday or a vacation it's always advisable to live in the prime location so that you get the best experience of the city especially and exclusively if you're planning on moving into that city uh, don't stay in the suburbs because you don't get the best sort of taste or best slice of that particular city of course exploring is so much more easier uh, by foot commuting is so much more easier again since you're moving to a new place you might not have you know your license is in place you might not be able to drive around taxis and cabs are super super expensive so just you know when you think about all of these costs and put, put them into consideration you'd be spending easily like two three hundred dollars tops on uh, transportation if you're using like the local commute and no cabs but if you're using cabs it could go to an upward of thousand dollars so you need to make sure that you budget it right and plan it accordingly in your head that hey even if i'm spending three hundred dollars more on this particular apartment at the end of the day at least i'm in the middle of the city and i have everything in my vicinity i'm saving on time i'm saving on uh, you know sort of the commute hassle and getting less sort of frazzled right so this was one of my biggest criteria, and that is why I picked downtown Toronto and that's where I was putting up at. The second thing that I uh, always make sure I check whenever I'm booking an Airbnb property is going on the listings and filtering out the super hosts. So you have listings from across you know across the city that you want to stay in and not everyone is a super host some of them have just listed it on the marketplace for the first time right uh, it's just like an amazon right some of them have just listed it for the first time they don't know much about hosting they've not really hosted people in the past they may not really be big on hygiene or cleanliness but the moment you look at the super host tag on airbnb you know for a fact that these people have good reviews they've been assigned the super host tag only after you've received certain number of reviews and certain number of five star ratings on your particular listing so you know for a fact that whatever it is that you're investing in um, they will take care of your basics right they'll it'll be a hygienic place it'll be well kept uh, because they've hosted a lot in the past and that is how they got the super host tag you know for a fact that they'll be friendly and they're invested in the business because this is not just one property padi hai so let's just put it up on a you know airbnb and see if we can get something out of it if you're a super host you have to be dedicated so it speaks volumes about you as a person as well uh, when you know sort of you're choosing the uh, correct listing for yourself and this is one of the other things that i consider and keep in mind and the third thing now is having an open and honest sort of conversation with your super host i'll get to the most important part here which is how i managed to like save 1100 dollars on my place so i ended up paying wait for it <laughs> i ended up paying 1.55 lakh for a 28 night uh, trip which was approximately like 4 weeks and I spent 1.55 lakh, which is a lot of money when you think about it. But in downtown Toronto, in that area, that's the best deal that I could find. Uh, it was an 18th floor apartment. You've seen the apartment. It's a beautiful place, right? And uh, with all of that, also amenities like washer, dryer, etc. was inclusive in the apartment itself. So that's not additional money that I had to spend. Water was also something that I didn't have to pay additional money for. You know, when you're renting out an apartment, water, all of these resources like, you know, the... Uh, uh, washing machine or the dryer that you're using all of those things are additional costs for a lot of these apartment condos right but in my case that was all inclusive but having said that I still managed to get like a better deal because when I booked the place I wasn't told that the building is not complete I wasn't told that it's an under construction building I was on the 18th floor my apartment floor was completely renovated and everything was done up we had the keys for it but this was something that the host had hidden from me. He wasn't very clear or uh, transparent about it when I'd signed up, which meant there was a little bit of a noise here and there. Now, I'm going to be very honest. I don't want to over exaggerate this. I wasn't told that all the towers were not ready yet. I wasn't informed that the gym, the swimming pool, etc. wasn't made yet. Uh, it was a super host. He had a ton of listings, of course, all over Toronto and, you know, in 
uh, Niagara, in downtown, in the suburbs, uh, Mississauga. He had a lot of places everywhere. But he didn't tell me this one thing that the place that I am booking is still under construction. Like my floor was ready. A lot of the flo floors were ready. But the building door entrance itself was not ready and we had to take the you know back gate whenever we would go in or out. Another one of the problems that I faced was the lift, right? There were six lifts, I believe, and there was only one operational on most days. So this was very cumbersome for me. Now, when you're in India, I'll be very honest, when I'm in India, we have a tendency to let go of a lot of things and make do with it, with every situation and sort of adapt. But one of the things I realized in the West, whenever you are traveling internationally or if you're living abroad somewhere, people don't have the tolerance for even the slightest bit of inconvenience if they're paying money for it. So I was very honest and open to my host telling them that, hey, the building was under construction, you didn't tell me about it. Even if there is no noise, even if there's noise only once or twice in my 28 days, it's still a problem. And number two was, uh, you know, the lifts. Sometimes we'd have to wait for 15, 20 minutes for lifts and that was that was the worst. So I ended up sort of having this uh, conversation with him and telling him that, hey, I am not really very happy and I feel sort of cheated. I have paid about, uh, you know, 1.55 lakh rupees in Indian currency, which is $2,585, something around that in Canadian dollars. So it's a huge chunk of money, right, for a studio apart apartment in downtown Toronto. So that's when I was like, uh, you know, I'm not really happy about this entire situation here. And the host immediately called me and he was looking for a way to resolve this and uh, I told him that I can make do with all of these you know sort of days that I've already spent also the washer broke one of the days and that took like about a week or 10 days to be fixed again not a big problem I'd already washed my clothes a day prior I had enough clothes for the next 10 days wasn't a big issue but you have to voice it out all those small little problems and you have to have a very strong case for yourself as well on chats so I did this all on Airbnb and be chats and then when I had this conversation the host asked me what my next plans were so I told him that I've booked like another place and I'm moving out to Montreal uh, after this but that's first of November so I was planning on maybe going into the suburbs and you know sort of exploring that area that's when he sort of uh, asked me if I would like to continue staying for the next 10 days and he was very unhappy with the fact that you know the building wasn't ready he was really excited about uh, leasing it out etc and uh, he just wanted to make up for it so he said like why don't you sort of stay here for the next 10 days and don't pay us any rent let it be on us if you can make do with the sort of noise which is there slightly and the, of course the lift issue which is there and I was like let me grab this opportunity because when you do the math uh, and you think about it I was paying initially $95 per night $90 to $95 per night living in that apartment and the moment I got that apartment for 40 days because that's the number of days that I stayed in total at the end of it I ended up paying approximately $65 63 to $65 per night which was a straight $1100 in total that I managed to save on that apartment and all of this was because I voiced my concern I was assertive but I wasn't rude and that's another thing I feel a lot of people have issues with you know you don't know where to draw the boundaries and you are are straight up very rude and indignant and sort of like you know blaming the other person but when you have an honest conversation um, and put your point forward telling them that hey this is a problem that I face can we do something about it they may chances are they may be able to help you uh, better and they would want to go above and beyond to help you better because being kind is always always a good idea and uh, that's one of the things that I did with which helped me get this property and I ended up also getting a very, very good deal on my Montreal property uh, where I saved about $300 to $400, which brings me to the last tip that I have for you. Whenever you're booking an Airbnb property for yourself, make sure when you like a listing, start a conversation with the person. First, telling them about how you enjoyed looking at the pictures, how it looked really uh, well designed, well decorated, etc. First, compliment them and tell them that these are the dates that you're looking at, uh, you know, staying. Are these dates available? Do they have Wi-Fi ask generic questions like such do they have good Wi-Fi do they have power failure issues etc what is like the overall you know feasibility in terms of com commute if they have local transport around all of that then when the ball gets rolling is when you tell them that hey I'm traveling alone I don't have the budget for like so much uh, is there something better that you could offer me or if you're traveling with like another person you tell them that hey we're two young girls traveling together we don't have that kind of a budget we really would like to stay in your property is there something better that you could offer when you're kind about it and when you're respectful towards their place because it's their home at the end of the day right 
right? At the end of the day, it is their home. And uh, the tone of the conversation really matters. I managed to get like really good deals um, every time. Uh, whenever I'm booking an Airbnb property, I make sure I get like a better discount. Sometimes I've ended up getting like in India, for Goa, for example, I managed to get like a 10,000 rupee off on like a four day listing, which is crazy. So instead of 26,000, I ended up paying 16,000 for a beautiful one bedroom apartment, fully furnished with everything. So it really depends on also on uh, how you hold that conversation and how kind and how sort of nice you are. So be nice. Uh, there are chances some Airbnb hosts will straight up say no. There are chances some of them will ask you what is it that you're offering and what's your budget. There are some who will straight up tell you, hey, I can give you an additional 10% or an additional 15%. But that's about it, right? And the last, last, last tip, okay, always try and book for long-term stays if you are planning on going to a particular place and you plan on staying there for a longer duration even if for two or three months say for example if you're moving to a different country right uh, when you apply for a long-term plan uh, on Airbnb and put that up as a filter you already get a lot of discount and if you're booking their place for two to three months there's a possibility they might extend you a bigger discount so that's it for this video I hope that it helped you and uh, let me know in the comments if you liked looking at the room tour or the studio tour it's pretty much like a studio if you did uh, also let me know if you'd like to see the montreal vlog as well and i'll show you what my montreal apartment looked like awesome uh, i'll see you guys around bye